Welcome to ADI's demo of our 5G ORAN ORU sponsored by Richardson RFPD. My name is Brad Brannon and I'm a wireless system architect for analog devices. My name is Jay Shu and I'm a systems engineering manager for the strategic partnership team at Analog Devices. For the next few minutes, Jay and I will share details on ADI's wireless products and how they come together to create an ORAN ORU. ADI's unique transceiver technology is designed to offer the best cost, size, weight, and power trade-offs in the complete radio solution. This benefit has been carried forward throughout all of our transceiver generations. The ADRV9026 represents analog devices fourth generation of transceiver. This quad channel transceiver also includes two separate observation receiver channels for DPD. The Large signal bandwidth of both the transmitter and receiver are a full 200 megahertz, while the synthesis bandwidth of the transmitter and the bandwidth of the observation receiver support a full 450 megahertz. The tuning range of this device covers 600 megahertz to 6 gigahertz, making it ideal to capture any of the 3GPP bands in this range. Total power dissipation of this device is only 5 watts, when supporting all four channels in TDD mode. This makes the ADRV9026 ideal for ORAN applications. A typical ORAN ORU can be built around the ADRV9026 and would include the AD9545, AD9576, ADRF5545, an Intel ARIA A10 FPGA, and a PA from NXP or other PA vendor. Combined with a power kit from ADI, a complete and fully functional ORU can be assembled. In fact, if the hardware is partitioned correctly, with all of the wideband and common elements on one PCB and all of the band-specific items on another, rebanding can easily be achieved simply by changing out the RFFE. The band and power level can easily be customized by simply replacing the RF front end as shown in the diagram. Shown here is a low power TDD option and a high or medium power TDD option and an FDD option as well. These are key elements enabled by the ADRV9026 family of transceivers for a properly partitioned ORU platform. Working with our partners, Intel, Comcores, Radisys, and Wiz, we co-developed this medium power C-band ORU. This ORU platform implements an ORAN-defined outdoor microcell covering the CBRS band with up to 5 watts per channel. This platform is fully ORAN compliant and supports a 7.2 phi split. This platform can also be used to support 3G, 4G, as well as the 5G uh, application if required. In general, this platform not only serves ORAN wireless customers, but it also is well suited for enterprise, industrial, and other applications. The two cards in the chassis include one wideband transceiver carrier card that supports all bands and one band and power specific RFFE. Together, these two boards form a complete ORAN ORU transceiver. The transceiver carrier card is designed to convert the optical interface on one end to small signal RF on the other. This one card supports all bands. One end of the board has dual optical interface, local maintenance port, and power connector. The other end of the board consists of small signal RF outputs delivered by the ADRV9026. In between is a complete power, clock, and synchronization circuitry in addition to the ARIA A10 which runs the lo-fi processing. The RFFE card, on the other hand, includes all of the RF electronics. The top side of the board supports heat sink, DC power synthesis, as well as the microcontroller to ensure that the PA is biased properly for all operating conditions. The underside of the RFFE includes circulator, directional coupler, power amplifier, drive amp, low noise amplifier, temp sensor, and filter. Now Jay, why don't you show us how to bring the cards up and get them functional? Let's go over each of the components for the setup prior to showing live demonstrations. 
The Grandmaster provides the timing element to the setup. Both the reference clock and the 1PPS are provided to the ORU board via the Grandmaster. Let's go over to the ORU now. Physically, the ORU is connected to a breakout board in this specific demonstration. The breakout board has individual connectors for the four transmit and four receive ports, as well as external LOs for testing. For simplicity, our setup has transmit one's output connected to an RF coupler and then fed back into the observation path while the coupled port is connected to the spectrum analyzer with 20 dB of loss. A positive 12 MHz CW tone from the LO will be set up on the transmit path. On the spectrum analyzer, you can see the tone pop up. Let's go over the tones in the spectrum analyzer from left to right. The leftmost tone is the HD3 from the positive 12 MHz tone. Next is the image. Centered on the analyzer is the LO. And finally, the rightmost tone is the actual positive 12 MHz tone. Let's turn on the tracking calibrations to work on the QEC and the LO leakage. You can see immediately that the image has started to go down. Let's get the status of the QEC calibration now. Let's get the status of the LO leakage calibration. We're now ready to do transmit at full power by changing the attenuation to zero. As you can see on the spectrum analyzer, the 100 megahertz carrier is centered at 3.625 gigahertz, but let's change the measurement on the scope to channel power. The carrier is now showing negative 32.5 dBm per 100 megahertz. Before we do the retuning, let's bring down the transmit power by 40 dB and also stop the FPGA's radio timer. However, before we bring up the carrier, on a retune, we have to reset the RF PLL and the transceiver. We also haven't calibrated the transmit path in that frequency range either. Similar to what was done when we brought up the carrier, we have to do the initialization calibration step. You'll see the calibration tunes pop up on the lower frequencies of the spectrum analyzer. The carrier now is centered to 2.85 gigahertz without the need to reset the transceiver. Once the system is up and running, it's capable of delivering high performance. While this platform targets 5 watts per channel, it is straightforward to replace the RFFE to quickly develop boards for other bands and power levels up to 60 watts. The figures below show performance capabilities for a range of output power when operated with DPD. Transmit EVM easily supports 256 QAM and receiver noise figures of 2.5 dB or better are possible. EDI has tested out many different PAs with our technology. Many of these qualification reports are available online at our Radioverse microsite. If you need support or guidance on developing a custom RFFB, please consult with us. If you are interested in more information on the transceiver carrier card, please consult with one of our partners. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you for your time. We hope that you've enjoyed this demo. For more information, please visit us at, us at richardsonrfpd.com slash analog devices.